Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion. Let's take a look at a video. The reason why I have grown to despise democracy is... Um, All right, let's see it. Because uh, it's not we the people. It's uh, we, we the some, uh, some people. And who are those people? Uh, Non-elected officials. So it's the nature of a democratic republic that we elect representatives who then appoint and hire people. And then those people can also appoint and hire people. That's the nature of the government that we formed. And Christo-fascists understand this very well. See, their bitching about unelected officials is always very selective. Because when unelected officials do things that serve their interests, they're very happy about it, as this person is, for instance, about the fact that electing Trump allowed Roe v. Wade to be overturned by unelected officials. So they like it when it helps them, they don't like it when it doesn't help them, which shows that this is not something that is grounded in principles, this is just something that is grounded in petty and naive right-wing authoritarian identity politics. Because that's what we have is a universal democracy. Um, everyone is allowed to vote, right. everyone. Uh, and just for the record, you know, yeah, I think the 19th Amendment should be repealed. I think that because, well, first and foremost, because I'm a Christian, um, you know, and that is that is the Christian position. No, it's not. Oh, my right. gosh. That, you're saying that? Yes, that is the Christian position, uh, is that households should not be divided against one another. So this is not the Christian position. This is just a Christian position and a particularly poor attempt to rationalize knuckle-dragging misogyny by pretending it's based on the Bible. But the story that this person is referring to where Jesus says a uh, kingdom divided against itself is laid waste and house against house falls has nothing to do with whether or not a husband and a wife can each vote for different candidates in an election. Elections didn't exist back when this was written. This is a rhetorical response to the notion that Jesus is casting out devils by Beelzebul, the prince of devils. And what Jesus notes is that a sovereign is not going to attack and undermine their own agents of their own sovereignty, which is an entirely different story from whether or not a husband and wife can vote for different candidates in an election. Again, this is just a laughable attempt to rationalize knuckle-dragging misogyny. It's not the Christian position. Um, so it's not just elevating a male vote, um, but it's elevating the household vote. We're saying that, um, that society, if you break it down to the basic building block, is not atomistic as individuals, but molecular being households. Uh, that the way that God sees humanity is he breaks them down to families. Mm. So this is a rather sophomoric attempt to try to leverage the authority of the Bible to authorize a particular right-wing authoritarian American evangelical conceptualization of the nuclear family and the head of the household. But it has to gloss over the diachronic as well as synchronic variabilities in the way that God is represented as conceptualizing humanity, as well as the structure of the household, which differs significantly between the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament. And always because those conceptualizations of the household are contingent upon broader social conventions and mores and things like that. And the reason they're trying to do that is because they want to limit power to those agents who will exercise it in a way that serves this person's own interests. And because those interests are embedded in knuckle-dragging right-wing authoritarianism and social dominance orientation, it's a very small pool of people, and it means rejecting the autonomy and the agency of women and asserting that men are the only real active agents in society today, or at least that they should be the only active agents in society society today and here's a demonstration that that's what this individual thinks and it's like well where where do women get their voice uh well where women get their voice is um from their father from their husband uh if they're not married it's from their father if they're uh, not married and their father's dead it's from their brother it's from their uncle it's from it's the men in their lives that love them so there are two ways to interpret what's being argued here either this person is arguing that a woman's voice is being heard through the male head of household, whether her husband or her father, or this person is arguing that a woman does not have a voice and she only gets one to the degree her male head of household dictates to her what her voice is going to be. If the former, that would be precluded by the observation that allowing a woman to vote means a household could be divided against itself because it would not be 
her voice. It would be the male head of household's voice in place of her voice. If the latter is being argued, then it's just rank misogyny. So this is just a dude who is looking around him and who does not like the fact that people who do not look and pee the same way that he does are allowed to make decisions about their own lives. So he's thinking, me won't be in charge, and he thinks that leveraging the authority of the Bible is the key that's going to unlock that door. But in trying to restore these outdated and dehumanizing principles from the biblical worldviews, he's got to be selective, the same way he is selective about which unelected officials are good and which unelected officials are bad. And so we only want to resurrect the misogyny of the biblical worldviews. We don't want to resurrect, for instance, the slavery of the biblical worldview. In fact, when it comes to slavery, he wants Christians to be able to arrogate credit for having destroyed that particular biblical principle. And so he's got to be selective about what from the Bible needs to be relevant to today. And this is just another indicator that this is not about principles. This is just about knuckle-dragging misogyny and right-wing authoritarian identity politics. And the fit for this video has been the Frank Miller Ben Grimm.